Live from New York City. Live from New York City. Microphone Bully Zone, Big Brother Biz, Mr. 13 Hats himself, surname OGIP, wax on, wax off, youngest sappy. You are now watching Rhymes and Politics, where we keep you up to date with everything hip hop, urban entertainment driven. Let's go. You're now watching Rhymes and Politics. Check, check it out. Yo, check it out. It's your right hand man, Sice. You're now tuned into Rhymes and Politic, the show that keeps you tuned into the latest hip hop and urban culture. Yo, we got a dope guest today, man. This dude is a jack of all trades. Huh? He's a hip hop artist, graphic artist, has a media company, and a producer. Mm. My man getting money from every angle. How can I get a job, my dude? Uh, listen, we man. went microphone bully, man. What's good, baby? I'm good. I'm good. How you feeling, man? I appreciate you. doing what you're doing. You ain't going to need no job. You know what I mean? Stop lying like you ain't give yourself the job Yo, already. Yeah, I appreciate you coming to the show. We're going to have some fun today, man. We're going to get into your story. Okay. Just tell us, um, microphone bully, how did how you even get started? Um, I want to say that was back in, the first thought was back in 2004. I had a new project that I had, you know, recorded and produced it myself and I was trying to get it to other avenues and I reached out to a particular website early in my stories I used to drop the website name because I wanted them to know I won yeah but you know so many years later they still alive yeah. salute to y'all for still being alive because it's hard to survive that many years of hip-hop for all I was trying to get on a particular website they didn't want to let me on. They were asking me all the pilot questions. You know, who mixed it, who's featured, who produced it. So yeah. when they kept hearing, I did it, I did it, I did it, I guess they felt I was premature in my um, industry connections. So, so, so that yeah. led to me just basically wanting to have my own platform so that nobody could do that to me again. Right. And I could do it to other people. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm giving you, I'm giving you the bites. I'm playing. Yo, he know I'm joking. Yo, I love, listen, yo we gonna listen. have fun, man. This is gonna be a good episode. On, so that's where you started out first. You started doing media first? No, no, I was rapping. Right, I had like all of us, because I was an artist. Yeah, I, no, I was on, 100%. I started off as a hip hop artist. Yeah, I was, then I transitioned behind the camera. Yeah, well, look, that's how you got to do it. If you're smart and you can find that lane and you can see yourself there, then it's beautiful to transition. But I definitely was in beginning stages of rap mode. I was a premature artist that didn't understand the way the likings of the internet and getting true placement work. Right. And I want to be honest and say that I was young-minded in the expectation that people were supposed to just naturally help me. Gotcha. Yeah. So... You said 2004, that's when you started 04. the media company? That's, the, that's when I started the Thoughts of Microphone Bully. Mm -hmm. By 06, Microphone Bully is here. 06, because I met you in, uh, it was 13 years ago. We was at a hip-hop yeah, event yeah. in the BX, Bronx. Yeah, Main, um, I think it was called the main event. I think it was called the main event. event. It was Shout called out the main to K. Gordon. Shout out to Real Live That's my bro, man. Yeah, okay. I was like trying to figure out who 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 event was that right there. So, yeah. and this is when I started my Sites TV. That was yes. right around that time. Yes, so I'm catching. I was what I was doing when I was transitioning from being an artist to going behind the camera. I was chasing artists down, going to uh, a lot of events. Okay. So what made my joint pop off was I was putting my videos out early. I'm, I'm at mm -hmm. events where all, like you said, the, all the other media outlets was at. Mm -hmm. I'm there at the same time. We all there. My joints was coming out faster than them. Okay. So that's how I kind of got my buzz up quick right. like that. So when I met you, that was me starting. I was early in the game with Sites TV. That's my old media company. The channel's still up. Your interview is still up there with my host, Leo mm -hmm. D. Dawson. Shout out to her, wherever she at. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. So, that's fine. So from the media, what else? How did you kept going from there? Uh, well, I mean, it sparked to so many things. Once, once we started the hip hop website, that that now we needed things to make our our website stand out. Mm -hmm. So we we started mixtape lines. Um, by '07, we had started a music video show, kind of like a online version of of like 106 and Park, basically. Okay. Um, and we would do that every Sunday, six to nine. And that was sponsored by something that started out by the name of Mogulus and then turned to live stream. And, mm. But this, we was early with that. We was still in like Blackberry days. So yeah. our cell phones wasn't able to really do everything now like right. our cell phones could do now. Yeah. So that was it's a little like bit a, it's of like a MySpace era? 
This is definitely MySpace. This is the custom MySpace with the custom top eights and all of that era. 100%. This was that. But that wasn't the start. I started out, I want to say, in music as a little kid. The, the, um, the rapper's group home was from my block. Oh, okay. Well, one of them. Nutcracker was from my block. You know, um, Little Dap is from Brooklyn, but Nutcracker right, was from Malachi. the Bronx. Right, yeah. um, Malachi. Malachi, yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I always watched them. When I was coming outside, they was in front of the building rapping. Mm -hmm. You know, my older brother was chilling with them, and then it was, from there, it was like, you see him, and then I saw him on TV. And once I saw him that's on TV, it was like, hold yeah, up. Yeah, that's like, inspiration that, right there. That's Damien from the second floor. That's Smiley the Ghetto Child. Yeah. He, he lives right down there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, because you're, you're a Bronx representative, so 100%. that's like Fordham, 183rd and all that? 183rd. 183, so, top, top of the block, 183rd. Bottom of the block, Fordham. Yeah. Andrews Ave, a mob forever. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, and we also had a dude by the name of Headquarters that actually the new D&D is named after Prem Studios. It's right. called Headquarters yeah. now. He was from my block. He wasn't originally from the block, but he lived there. He family. He, he's passed away now. Um, he was murdered back in the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that point, he was the head of promotion at Ruckus Records. And this is during the sound bombing time right. with like Talib, Kali Hatef, Most yeah. Def, like, Eminem. Yeah, that's like was late 90, there. early 2000s. Yeah, this is early. So, you know, they, they, he was the first person that I seen come through the neighborhood with a diamond pendant record label. It was like the Ruckus Records blade. Mm. He had the logo chain. They had gave him a Durango. This is when Durango <laughs> was fine. That's probably you know the first I mean? generation Durango. Yeah, and all you that. know what I mean. It was, and you know that that showed me. My one of my man's rapping on TV. Another one's promoting, and they giving him trucks and jewelry. And the, he used to sell the promo shirts. He's supposed to be giving the Ruckus promo shirts away. You know, he's he's selling them for five dollars, and I'm just seeing the hustle and everything. Right. And that was the early days. I just started going out with him. He'd be like, yo, come out, biz, mm -hmm. and put these posters up for me so I don't got to jump out the truck. You could just jump out. He'd take That's us. That's early street promotion. smoking weed. Yeah. Little kid. So you in training, right? He put you from in the, training. From a young boy. Mm -hmm. From a young boy. And and I, I like to say that headquarters is probably the reason why we get microphone bully now, and we're not just rappers. Right. Because I saw him getting it in promo. Okay. So I knew it was, like, actually feasible. So it was meant to be. It Pretty was much. meant to be because I was writing them rhymes early and we was on this path and we worked for it. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it definitely was part of our soul. It was close. Yeah, it didn't yeah. happen by mistake. Talk about your, your upbringing in the Bronx and all that. What you was going through? What did you see? I was just like everybody else. I was outside, outside, like, you know, mm -hmm. in the way where you go to jail too early. So at 17, I was already on Rikers. You know what I mean? Wow. I, 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 I don't know what 99 looked like in the street. Yeah. I know what it looked like in C-74 and C-76 and mm -hmm. C-77. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, C-76, the different malls and shit like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, after that, just to come home is just a, a, a realize that we could be doing other things, but you know, we did all the things. We did everything that, if you from 183rd and you was outside, you was doing. So we was robbing people, we was hustling, and mm -hmm. we do all the stuff that I tried to convince my son not to do. Right. You know what I mean? That's what that was like. So going through all that, how did that change your mindset when you came out and started to like uh, get into the grind and stuff like that with the media company? How do all I that, mean, like... to be honest, I, I, I don't think it changed my mindset. I think I had to tame certain things, but I think it gave me a mindset of, one, knowing how to deal with so many people. Mm -hmm. When you really hustling and you really dealing with personalities and you trying to keep the block so you're dealing with the aggressiveness of that, yeah. and then you're dealing with a slick talking head that's going to tell you anything to get you, mm -hmm. you kind of learn the gift to gab quick if wow. you're good out there. Yeah. Um, and that just made me, I want to say, have an ability to talk in front of people and not be scared. So mm -hmm. being on the block blessed me with that. And then, you know, being from the Bronx, we felt we we right there. We three blocks away from Cedric where it started. Right. You know, yep. um, so we feel, and then we got people like Gangsta and Premier right on the, like, in the neighborhood. Or uh, Mr. Magic pulling up, mm -hmm. you know, um doing his thing, lots of things, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and just seeing that kind of like, like let us know like it was other things we could do. And then, you know, being someone that was, I'm the youngest of six boys. Right. I only got older brothers. Okay. 
So we was already playing football with the bigger kids. We was playing basketball with the bigger kids, you know. So it just, the block just gave us the ability to talk with our chest. Right. That's what I like to say. What was that moment that woke up your hip hop spirit, right? Because I'm going to give you a quick okay. story for me, right? I'm a 70s baby, so 1984, what's the movie? Beach Street? Okay. I think that's when it came out. I'm from 161 in Morris, the Brown Building. Okay. All right? So in the, they had a community room in there, and in the summer times, they have, like, movie night. Okay. People in the building could come down to the community room, uh, have movie night. Watch Beach so Street we, together. we little kid, yo, bro. Oh, that's where I kind of really saw hip-hop, and it, it woke me. That's when it... My hip hop spirit was born because I'm actually seeing hip hop. Okay. And then now I'm looking out my front window and I, I'm actually seeing it now. The big Jeeps pumping Rock Kim and all that, LL Cool J and all that. So that made me start looking for hip hop now. You know what I'm saying? The clothes, the music, the, the dancing and all that. So what mm -hmm. was that moment for you when, it, when your hip hop um, spirit was, was born? I want to say, all right, it's two moments. It's one, it's, it's before going outside this happens because. My, one, not my oldest brother, but the one right before being the oldest, Tone, had the ultimate CD collection. Mm -hmm. So he leaves to go outside, and I'm sneaking in his room, and I'm picking out a different CD every day, just trying not to scratch it while I put it in, <laughs> yeah. just play it and all of that. You know what I mean? And oh, you was that's one of when I got, hip, I got hip to Slick Rick, the great adventures of Slick Rick album. Yeah. And um, like early Boogie Down production albums and all of that, KRS-One joints. Um, and then TV happened, and I saw Children's Story music video. Mm -hmm. So now Slick Rick was on TV, and he had, he had jewelry on. And you, it was like that moment, I was like, yeah, this is fire. So for me, after school, it was video music box. Oh, yeah. Ralph McDaniels. It was religious. That's was why religion. we had MBTV, because of Ralph McDaniels. He's, yo, bro. I bit Ralph McDaniels. Uncle Ralph, you the man, you we the legend. You, Uncle we Ralph, all man. followed you. That's a fact. Tigger included. You know MTV raps? They all came after Uncle Ralph, man. Video music box. That was That's the, number one. Thank you. Then everything they could argue. Tigger could argue with yo with yo MT with Fab Five, because mm -hmm. you know that was the host over there. Yeah. Um and they could do that. But Uncle Ralph. Uncle Ralph set it off, man. And Uncle Ralph made us believe because it wasn't high-end production. It yeah. was like one man in the club <laughs> by himself. When it was dangerous yeah. in every event. Yo, I was looking forward to like seeing Rock Kim. Um, let the rhythm hit him. I ain't no joke. Mm. Yo. Uncle Ralph Polly was there with the camcorder. <laughs> you know what he I mean? He did a couple he, of their music videos. Like, I believe, yes, he did. Yes, I'm telling like, you, was super legend. Yo, we gotta actually, get Ralph on the show, actually, man. Actually, might be even the first interview ever we did at Microphone Bully, Uncle Ralph true legend it was audio it was in standard definition days we wasn't filming it was an audio phone interview yeah. but um yeah salute to uncle ralph he definitely is another part of Stable, like the blueprint man. for anybody in front of a camera talking hip-hop yeah so from an artist what's the next passion your type that you went into was it graphic arts or the producing Oh, no, it was definitely producing because I, I'm from Andrews and everybody's rapping and I'm trying to get beats from the people who do the beats in the hood. Yeah. But we got everybody trying to get a, the next group home or, or <laughs> Smiley the Ghetto Child. So there's a list of the older heads from the hood mm -hmm. that gets the beat first. Oh, OK. So but I'm around these dudes. So it's like after six people didn't want the beat, then I could get the beat. You know what I mean? So that led to me buying like a beat machine off of them. Mm -hmm. Like when, when MPC came out, my people bought MPC and I bought their old um, Dr. Rhythm DR5. It was a four track, like drums all in one and then three melodies. And I started making beats on that. So beats was second. Okay. But the first time I ever made money off of any of this, I want to say it was probably like in the graphic design mixtape realm. Oh, okay, okay. So did you wanted to make beats or you just was tired of waiting to get the, the scraps from after everybody else? I, I want to say it's a little bit of both. If I would have got all the fire beats, I probably would have been, I wouldn't have craved having beats as much. Mm -hmm. So it would have been easier for me to say I'm not making beats. But I've always been the person that if, if, if I can't just you know, buy it or someone give it to me, I'm going to learn to do it. Yeah. I'm going to invest in a machine. I'm going to... I'm gonna try my hand in it. And if I'm bad at it, then 
I might not do it no more. But if it, na if it feels natural, mm -hmm. then we're going to keep going. What producer inspired you? Oh, definitely Preem, because he had did the whole group home album and everybody bit Preem. Anybody that does <laughs> yeah. was biting Preem to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe a little Q-tip, but I even think he was biting every... Oh, listen, Preem. <laughs> That's it. Preem. And then when I got on my own quest, I got to give it up to like Austinus of the Heat Makers. Okay. It went from the Preem sound and the next sound that really touched me was heat maker sound okay. you know what i yeah. mean and then i want to say from there it went to like the carne sold sold out sample sound okay. like so those were the those were the producers that really happened of course lost professor p of Rod. course all those people was a part of that mm -hmm. too yeah but i knew group home and preen did that so yeah. it was so that it, stuck out to you the most that, preen. yeah and and he, was, he was there like yeah. i could see him you know what i mean so that made us like really gravitate towards that so much more. Okay. And then as far as in my own sound, it was all, um, I stole from all those people. You know what I'm, every one of them. And Dre included on the mm. West Coast, or uh, Jermaine Dupree in the South. I, st I stole from every producer. Anything I liked, I tried to emulate, you know, Whatever beat was the beat that had the radio at the time, right, I right. tried to see how I how they do in. it. You yeah. know what I mean? And 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 then my own sound developed with me as a rapper and producer. And okay. then you know just whatever I felt the most, I felt like was the good beat. Yeah, because you got a couple aliases. You got Microphone Bully, Beat Hogan, Big yeah. Brother Biz. How did you come up with these names? Um, it was a little bit of not wanting to seem early like I did everything and feeling like if I did a beat for you, I didn't want you saying like Big Brother Biz did my beat. Like an early it, Microphone Bully was like the beat stamp. Oh, okay, okay. So it was like Microphone Bully did my beat. And then some people would call me, like, yo, Bully, what up? Like, I'm like, yo, my name is Biz. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it started getting too much like I'm getting called by a website. So when you call me Microphone Bully, I naturally felt that you didn't know me, mm -hmm. you knew a brand, and you wasn't cool. We, we would never be cool. Right. You just wanted in on the brand. The brand didn't got you. So seeing that, I just started branding everything separately now. Gotcha. Like, so wow. where, like, yeah. if, if I'm doing camera work, that's this, and not mixing the entities. Okay, okay. So what do you like kinda, doing the most? Being um, an artist, produ producing, I think graphic it's a, work? It, it's, it's a balance, because it's, it's one, how I wake up. You're just a creative at heart. Nah, I man, if you wake up pressed, you can't be rapping if you're not getting the bag. <laughs> yeah. So I'm waking up certain days like, yo, I got to get to the money. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I'm, and, and this personality is telling biz fall back, you know, unless you negotiate in the deal. Right. So due to that and, and, and not trying to be like, I'm, a, I'm an adult. I've been here for years, you know, just trying to say I'm an inspiring rapper for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, you feel like you are what you are when you're getting checks for it. Mm -hmm. So rap is still the love. I love the chase of trying to create. So it could, I could be bored at two o'clock, start trying to create and look up and it's nine o'clock yeah. and I ain't even noticed. Yep. There's not too many things in life that's like that, so mm -hmm. you know that you could genuinely just love. Besides, like video games, you know, like maybe you could get locked in the video games all day and that much right. time pass. You know, but it's not one thing that I like no more. I don't even like editing videos. I like to film in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of connecting like this right. with an entity yeah. because there's hopes of growth. Um, but. Editing is tedious. It bothers my eyes after like three hours. My yeah. eyes start getting <laughs> juicy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like all type of shit. Like anybody who enjoys editing yeah. might be a little bit of a psychopath. Yeah. So how did you learn about incorporating the business and getting to that bag? Where did, where did, who taught you that or how did you learn that? Oh, okay. I got a couple of people that I can honestly say was a mentor. I got a guy by the name of Samin Johnson who mm -hmm. actually lived in my neighborhood, a whole nother person. And he, one day he saw us rapping in the cypher. Uh, he kind of jumped in just looking. We stopped like, yo, who are you? My man was like, nah, he good. We continued rapping. Next day he walked up to me and he said, yo, I liked what y'all was doing yesterday. I used to... Um, well, not I used to, but I managed artists, and he brought me in his house, and I saw my first platinum plaque. He had a platinum plaque of, remember, Case and 
Foxy Brown touch yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like their management at the time. Okay. And he had a Space Jam plaque. They had got that song on the Space Jam soundtrack. Oh, okay. Shit was like seven times platinum. <laughs> so that was that. That was the eye opener right there. Said, this dude got platinum plaques. He pulled out a box of photos. This is back in the day. It's nothing digital. Like he pulled out a box of traditional Kodak photos, Polaroid style, yeah. like that type of shit. Yeah. And he was with everybody. And not with everybody like one time, he was with everybody like drunk, like after the club type <laughs> right. shit. You know what I mean? Like they might have been doing their thing together. Nah, that's but like, <laughs> you know, like Russell, everybody, I'm talking about everybody. Yeah. Everybody, like the execs. So I'm like, I'm like, wow. So then, you know, he started just teaching me little stuff. Like he put me on to like song mode. Okay. You gotta distinguish the chorus from the rhymes. Mm -hmm. a, a different sound should come in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he kind of taught me that. And then he grew even bigger into creating like his own like luxury watch company called Kinsley and Johnson. Okay. So that kind of plugged me even more. Like when I went into like my souffle clothing days and we opened the clothing store, he taught me like how to find a manufacturer mm -hmm. and do all of that type of stuff. So um, I got to definitely thank Sami. Sami was one of those people that definitely taught me a little bit of business and then like I said headquarters too with the promotion knowing okay. that, that yeah learning the, in, the ins and outs and then music wise like I said just the game the mm -hmm. game everybody all the people that rapped on my block back then if we was in a cypher you couldn't just rap like you had to like overtake somebody's rhyme you know what I mean <laughs> so he'd be at the end of like a 12 and you'd be hearing it and knowing I gotta like double dutch my way right into this yeah. real quick and yep. um if you was whack you got to rap two bars, three bars before they got you up out of there. And if you ever jumped in again, they'd be like, yo, man, I'll punch you in your mouth if you do that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> to me, like, so it kind of was like you had to earn that. Mm -hmm. my, my hood was like a gauntlet of rappers that definitely had the talent. People right now still rapping like Squalor Orphan. They older than me. And yeah. they still And they going. still on that, still Smiley, on that block? you was doing the 100 Mad. The other day interview with homie. Off yeah, of, Sick Flow. Sick Flow. Yeah. Smiley just did the tour with them. Smiley the ghetto town, he down with the Gotham City boys. Okay. That's their crew. You yeah, because they, I mean? they, they, just, they just had a concert. The Onyx. They yeah. did an Onyx tour. You know what I mean? So Smiley was on that tour with them. I was going to go there. The I was going to go there after work, man. But, you know, things happened because I was going to go on behalf of Sick Flow. So, but yeah. that, that didn't turn out well. But I'll catch up with him. Uh, in November, sixth floor again. You'll probably see him back on the show again. All right, salute yeah, to same to you, man. You can always come. This is your home right, too, man. You can always you, come back. Anything you want to promote, you, know, you just want to come and kick it. Sice, you shooting. know we talk off camera. Yeah, yo. you know what I mean. So let Sice a good person. He been here for a while. The first time I met him, he was doing this. It's 13 years later, Same like you energy. just said, still doing it and just trying to provide a platform. So yeah. any any anybody out here pushing has to respect the people supplying the platform. Mm -hmm. If you're not respectful to that, you're not going to be respectful to anything out here. You know yeah, what I mean? So. I definitely want to give you your flowers, man, because like you said, every time I talk to you, you're always giving me good um, motivation and advice. I may be feeling like, because you know, you watch, you'll see what I'm doing on the gram or social media. Be like, yo, I may think I'm like, damn, am I doing it good? Am I doing it right? Is, does it look good? And you just give me that, that that push, that motivation, like, no, Sice, you good. It looks good. Keep doing what you're doing. I'd be like, yo, my man, I appreciate you, man. No, yes, so I just want to give you your flowers I on that. Because like, you know, we got to give each other that, 100%. that positive That's energy, That's motivation. Man. That's gasoline. Yeah. That, that, that make you want to turn the computer on and do a couple more hours of mm -hmm. editing. Yeah. And, and make you want to invest in studio spaces and cameras. and Good production. And good production yeah. and good design as yeah. well. Because yeah. that plays a major part as well. Um, Look, you, you, you make it easy. <laughs> I say it like that, you make it easy, my brother. I'm trying to keep up with you, kid. I hear you. Um, I so hear you started, a, you, you got this term called tribe. What's that about? Um, I think, I think when we first started back in the day, we had community mm -hmm. when we was doing them showcases. We had a You're real right. community. Yeah, because that's like early Twitter and everybody yes. would like tweet each other. We everybody closer. Yeah. Um, I had the show, the chat room would fill up, mm -hmm. people would come in the chat room try to talk and we would verbally jump them, like, get out of here, don't be playing, yeah, you know what I mean? everybody be posting each other. Yeah, you know, it was you different. You can't hardly see that now. I'm like, damn. And that's, that's what it is. It's just me pulling my people together, the yeah. people that's close enough to, I feel like, my name is Brother Biz and I used to call everybody brother. Mm -hmm. And I kind of slowed up on that because I, I, 
it's, I may mean, not say that because I still call my people brother, but it's just like tribe is secondary. Tribe is like the extended family. Like family, and yeah. If, if I want like anybody no to get it, I want y'all to get it before the next person right. because we all can't go. Yeah. So that kind of what it is. And it's, it's the people that if, if an opportunity does open, I want to look to that group of people right, first. Right, right, yep. To, to, mm -hmm. to, to, um, to work up. with, yeah, to create up. with, to um, brainstorm with on mm -hmm. all levels, not just to get a bag, because it's not always about a bag. Right. It's definitely about, you know, community love, building. Yeah, love of the craft, too, man. You know, what's, what's, what you think is your biggest accomplishment right now? Um, I I want to say I want to say the biggest accomplishment probably would just be still being here. Like mm -hmm. I've done so many things that I thought was the big move that was going to turn the page. Exactly. I've been around so many people in a position um, to actually like touch them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That. Same I here. thought Same that here. was going to be the women, mo the winning moment. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, just, just the biggest accomplishment is one, just to be able to pay the bills in the household mm -hmm. off of all of this. What you love Whether to do. Whether it be music, visual, design, whatever. Just in this lane, that's that's the biggest accomplishment. And then just um, the amount of free reign over life and yeah. scheduling. Yeah. If I wake up tomorrow and don't want to do nothing, I'm not doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't have nobody but myself over me to, like, put me back on work time, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, so... A financial freedom, too? I don't want to say financial freedom yet. I want to get richer before I start nah, talking fact, all yeah, that, that, you know what cool I mean? Me, like, yeah. Yeah, financial, almost great stability. I want to put it like that, y'all. Like, life is good. Mm -hmm. We're not broke. We eat good. Yep. We live good. Um, but I want to be, like, as like the memes say, so financially stable where I'm able to bless others. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I want to do it. I want to be like that. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I want that type of feeling. I want to I wanna be able to see an idea and tell someone, look, I fund that for twenty percent. Facts. You know, like yeah. I, I want that type of paper. Yeah. So you know, and and then and then, I I just want the gen. I want. I still want the genuine love within it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to trade that genuine love for what we're doing. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So Let's talk about the media company, MBTV. I got a show called Check Your Potential. What's okay. that about? Just networking, creating opportunities, um, putting yourself in a position to. Uh, be able to give something and not always ask. Yeah. So sometimes you want a relationship with somebody and everybody's trying to punch up, everybody's trying to network up, and sometimes networking up costs more than you have, so you have to find the secondary route in, so check your potential and microphone bullying, all of these probably were those ways of having something to give back to make us valuable, to create value. Like I always say, you gotta create value out here, right. and, or whatever field you are. So. That's basically what that was. And then, you know, it's giving people a platform. So many people that got voices out here, mm -hmm. they doing the same thing we, we we were doing or we've been doing or we are doing in different ways. And um Yeah, because Sky High is involved with that too as well. She's also Sky a host partner in crime. Me and yeah. Sky, we in year talk 20. About, yeah, talk about that teamwork. Yeah, yeah, 20 years, everything. That's life partner, that's twin, Facts. that's yeah. a best friend, that's Ron Brown's no wifey in the club and everybody looking at us and I might have been the only one in there really with his girl dancing like it's okay I don't care type shit yeah. and now years later my friends be like y'all relationship goals that's a fact you know what I mean that's yeah. my friend yeah. I, I, I work with my friend that's a, good a lot look. of people can't go to work they try to get away from their wife yeah. and I go I could never work with my wife like <laughs> so she right now she video in the video that's you know what I mean yeah. shout out respect to yo shout out to her man respect Queen. and she beautiful on top of that it's mm -hmm. not like you know she I, let me not even act like that but you know she's a beautiful woman that's in her own lane she hosts she right. does so many things herself she's heavy heavy on her ugc world you know type stuff you know yeah. she, she she's a business mogul of her own you know that's that's best friend that's a fact man. Best friend, I, I, man. I, I encourage that, man. I everybody to find that and i encourage everybody to indulge in whatever your partner likes to do 
help them, mm -hmm. and you know, you will help yourself at the same time by doing it. I love it, man. That is so dope, man. I like seeing it when they when they pulled up. I was like, yeah, that's what's up. Man. I like the, the vibe. The energy is perfect. It's beautiful, All and we here working. They it's help. only a couple events I went to when Sky wasn't with me. Like mm -hmm. that's Road Dog. Yeah. It's nothing like having a partner that do the same thing. You got the same agenda. You got the same bills. Like you videoing, y'all both thinking about what we cooking for dinner tonight. Like the you know same what drive, I mean? Like everything. It's, it's real. Yep. It's real. Does she help with the editing too, or anything? All that. Scott, everything I do, Scott do. She still working she, at camera. She, she want to make beats. <laughs> Those beats is trash. Sky got trash beats, y'all. She tried Yo, before. Yo, keep teaching it over. Uh, well, honey, she want to make beats. We here. But I ain't rapping on them until they get good. You know what I mean? Like, she doing her thing with this camera, though, man. I'm like, OK, sis. Sky, yeah, sis. Sky got Do that your on thing. Public. And it's not just hold the camera. Like, Sky going to balance the ISO. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? She's going to make sure that the F-stop is at the right point for my camera, you know, videographer yeah. people. You know? She's Yo, y'all check that, that show out, man. Check your potential. It's and she's to me to me she's a natural host yeah. it's not force fed yeah you know what i mean she get on there she's personable with people mm -hmm. and then and on all levels like i watched sky walk dj Khaled to the stage i've walked backwards with a camera through a festival crowd right you know what yeah. i mean walking Khaled to the stage so i've seen it on all type of levels yeah all different type of levels yeah i saw and, um, a few episodes did an outstanding job Great job. Great I was hosting. like, okay, yeah. Because, you know, I try to watch a few people, you know, just to find my groove and my lane and stuff like that. That's how so, you do it. You, you know got to look to the perfect. Everybody, it's, it, everything is like that. You were a basketball kid. We was crossing over and we was like, Mike, you mm -hmm. know what mm -hmm. I mean? And we was fading away. And yeah, we all emulate. Yeah, because I'm the best I'm, of the best. I'm the guy that's always behind the camera. Now I'm in front of the camera, so I kind of got to find my little. My lane and how I fit into the whole yeah, yeah. podcast field and stuff like that. So. I think I think the best thing for that is just like it, it becomes easier with preparation. Facts. When and you do your research mm -hmm. and you know who you talk to. That's all to, I do. I sit home. I'm at work. I'm on break. I'm watching yeah. the tour and watching other shows. And then you're talking about things you care about. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's when you get thrown in the water and it's like, this is a whole new topic. Let's talk about sharks today. Yeah. You're like, now I got to be an oceanologist. Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> or a marine biologist, like, interview. Like, it's like, whoa, you could do that shit? You definitely made for this. You uh, know what I mean? Yeah. But um, when you're in your niche, in, in your field, this got to be easy. You can see it in your face that you got genuine passion love for and it. passion yeah, for it. Yeah, love and passion for it. Yeah. It's in your eyes. Yep. Right? It's in I can sit here and do this all day. So I, 100%. I'm, I get it. Let's go. Let's talk about the media, the transformation, like the transition. Because, you know, early in the years, like 80s, let's start from the 80s coming 90s to the 2000s. It was hip hop magazines. We're going to just focus mm -hmm. on the hip hop part, hip hop culture part, right? Okay. So it was just like, Magazines, let's say like World Up Magazine, Write On Magazine. I want to shout out a magazine by the name of Protege Magazine. It's not here no more. But um, early in my career, Protege gave me uh, four pages for free if I did the art for eight. Shout out to mm -hmm. Rom Robinson. Salute. Rom Robinson used to be out on the field. He used to throw the showcases, Star Watch Showcase back in the day. Okay, so okay. you probably went to a couple of those. Right. But um, I want to shout out to Rom because Rom gave me that opportunity. And Rom, if you ever want to do anything in media again, I will help. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that <laughs> in the middle of an interview. Um, but um, I want to shout out that magazine because those were the people like us. Shout out to the source. We all wanted five mics. Go. Source, shout double out to double XL. Shout out to Vibe. Yep. Shout out to Scratch. Shout Net out to magazine. all of the ones that had money and backing. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I want to shout out Protege Magazine because yeah, those people actually contributed to career. Because after those, we went to like to the blogging era, and oh, yeah? now the blogging era transformed into the podcast era. Yes. How do you I, see we, this going? I, well, we had the mixtape era. The mixtape era got left out of there somehow, and that was. I'm probably just saying. The most. I'm just saying on the media part. Oh, the on the culture, media side, just the media part. Yeah, of the culture. yeah. I mean, we went, we definitely the transitions went from that we just went through to over the, the years. blog era. I mean, the blog that was, was a heavy. whole another thing. That was a that that was some of the best bags I ever got as well. Yeah. And and some of the some of the biggest execs bought those. Like some of the people right now, I'd be like, I sold him a package before. <laughs> His. <laughs> That dude who's signed right now and mm -hmm. big, yep. I remember when they were buying blog places. Yeah. Buying. Call it payola, call it whatever you wanna. I don't care, but we all know in this industry, money flowing. Facts. You know what I mean? Yep. And um, 
and and the blog era was big that was dope. pay one price get on 15 websites 30 websites Yo, it was, it was dope. i had size tv blog man so i was i was so like i just love hip hop so much i just want to give artists that light and you know show them that love and get them out there and stuff yeah. like that so Yo, I was part of that little loop, man. It was and get a bag, too. Yeah. and get a bag when you got a rollout coming in. You need extra media assistance. Mm -hmm. You know yep. what I mean? You trying to put some extra fire under that and yep. get the bag, cause cause it's a part of this game. It's advertisement, and yeah. if you gonna give IG money to advertise or any of these companies back then maybe a google adsense campaign or something mm -hmm. to buy a banner on a website yeah, something yeah. like that you know if you're gonna give them some bread you could give a media outlet some bread to push you to the forefront of That's their viewership fact. yeah now we're in the podcast is. ever yeah and it's the same thing yeah. <laughs> people buying podcast spots don't think that everybody just pulling up and doing it per se for the culture people out here buying bog packages even corporate mm -hmm is buying UGC podcast style Amazon, um, how you call them, like, I even, this is this product, you know what I mean? I, yeah, the word just yeah, lost my yeah. head, but I, I mean, I lost track of the word in my head. So it's, it ain't nothing changed, it's the same thing, it just looked different. It's delivered different. I think we have a lot more technology that helps us you go. during the time, because yep. mm -hmm. definitely it was harder editing wise back then. Um, we cameras is so much better standard 4k standard. ain't they 4k yeah, is the I'm, standard now yeah yeah but i'm just talking about we started before hd like yeah. you know what i mean so i started my first camera was like a canon like i think it was an a1 standard definition with a tape like a physical <laughs> tape like you know what i mean i'm gonna tell I used you to my first camera go ahead play go. the tape back and then the computer will record what was on the tape so if you recorded for, the tape was 90 minutes, to get your footage, you had to record 90 minutes into your computer. That's how it worked, in order to edit it. That's how you got the footage off of like a, like a mini VH8, kind of like tape type of stuff, Damn. VHS type of stuff. All right, so then. check this out. When I got my first camera and started, right, it was, I was on a uh, trip with the family. We was in California. Happened to go on Walmart. I went into like the, the uh, electronic department. Mm. They had the camera called the flip camera. Okay. It was like this size, HD, and it had like a USB uh, port that pop out. Okay. So I got that, and I got like a uh, like a little camera handle and a okay. small little LED okay. light. Like little rig setup. Yeah, little rig setup. Little okay. baby joints. And this is my little starter package right here. Yeah. So, but you did? You yeah. Did so I was just out there just filming, just trying to get a feel for it. So when I came back to New York, shout out to my dude, DJ Trace. Okay. He actually gave me the name Sice TV. Because we was all... That's a, a Black Bottle boy, right? Yeah, Low East Side. Yeah, shout yeah, out, shout out to Avenue shout D. To, yeah. Shout out to Black Bottles, the promo company. Yeah, shout out to like DJ Trace, too. man. Still doing his thing. 100%. So he's the one that gave me the name Sice TV. So, you know, it was something that we was just talking about. He just blurted it out. And then later on, I said, oh, it just came back to me. And I just, I said, Ran you know what? It. When I came back to New York... What was your rap name? Sice. Oh, it was Sice already. It was Sice the Con. It was Sice the Con. C-O-N, creativity over negativity. Okay, you, you know, had the you know. acronym and yeah, no. So I just man, cut man. all that off. It was just straight Sice. So coming back to New York, you know, just, you know, I just brainstorming and just figuring out how, how you're going to move and attack this thing. Hip-hop events. So like I was telling you earlier, when I was going to these events, everybody had these big cameras. Mm -hmm. My little camera was like this with the handle. I was able to put it together, come up, film. Break that joint down, put it in my pocket, and be gone. Gotcha. And my joints was going Love up it. on YouTube quick. Yeah, so that's yeah, how I got my buzz up fast. So, you know, that was like my Yeah, entry back then level. we was all pushing trying to get like our content first. I remember when I did my first festival, that's how I was on it. Like, I was like, yeah, man, we ain't even leave yet. And I'm trying to put posters up. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Just to, like, it was the first time I, we were filming like, major names even back then when i because i had did some time behind the scenes at sirius xm shout out to dj still he plugged mm -hmm. me that for that and i was doing like behind the scenes camera time at the, at, at, at the station so for um hip-hop nation he was yeah. on back then um and that was another another good behind the scenes moment of having just one-on-one -on -one time with big name artists mm -hmm. you know like you know Nellies and Camrons, like that level artist, yeah. hip hop artist, and it just was more proof that we belonged, kind of like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then more proof that picking up the camera and doing this was another way in. Yeah. Yep. So 
that the media is big and it's always going to be big. Nah, it, it's a, a major part of our industry. Yeah, because I took a little hiatus. I say like a six, seven year hiatus. So this is me coming back to it now and just trying to come back at a higher level. You yeah. know what I mean? Just taking it to the next level. Well, you got to do that just as a, as a man in general. You never want to come back to something five, six years later yeah. and still be at the same right, level. That exactly. should have do something to your inner soul, nah, you know, your inner ninja. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, it was like, damn, I'm still here. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And no disrespect to anybody that's been doing the same hustle if it's successful. Mm -hmm. If it's successful, do that shit for 50 more years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you definitely want to feel like you're growing. Right. And you definitely have grown sites. Like, your, 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 your content is clean. Yeah. Your, um... Your logo designs and asset packs that go along with your own. Yeah, I, I take real content. pride in the quality, and, and I'm real big on branding. So anywhere I'm go, you're gonna see me with the brand on. You're gonna 100%. see that in your face. Yeah, I'm 100%. putting it right in your face. I need my, I need my set. Don't worry, it's coming. It's coming. I got you. Yeah, so what would you tell yourself? Where you are now, yourself 13 years ago to the, the person I met. What would you tell yourself? Then as on what level, like, though? On um, the life level or on a business life level? Life level, business level, all okay. around level. I got you. Here, here, I would definitely tell myself on a business level to talk less and, and keep the business deal as short as sweet. Like, don't talk too much. Just let them know what you want. Be quiet. Let them talk. Right, <laughs> right there. Yes. All of y'all right now, if you're in a negotiation, tell them how much you want for the little bit of time that you're going to be there. And then just be quiet. Even if it's awkward, let them break the awkwardness. So mm -hmm. I would tell myself that. Um, and then on a life tip, I would say, it's okay to outgrow. It's okay. It took me years to forgive myself for not wanting to be a part of a lot of stuff. Yeah. I felt like, oh, you ain't holding it down or you, you ain't staying true to your day ones or all of that. And You sometimes gonna have to separate the growth, right. and, and and you gonna have to get in different waters in order to acclimate. Mm -hmm. When you stay in the same water too long, you just become way too comfortable. So, being uncomfortable is important yeah. in life. Make sure you get uncomfortable, y'all. Get out there and get uncomfortable. <laughs> That's a fact. Any words or advice for anybody that want to come into your your field? Any like advice or invest, good words? Invest, and if you can invest. Find anyone who did invest it and work with them for free until you become important enough for them to invest into you. Simple as that. If you don't got the money for what you do or want to do, find someone who already invested the money in that and start working with them and, 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 and build a relationship and then learn. And don't come in thinking that from jump you deserve a check. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to do it for free, don't do it. Facts. That, 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 that right there, that's, that's, that's the energy to the up and coming person. And go out there and earn everything so no one can say they made you. I love it, man. That's dope, man. How can the people find you? It's microphone Bully, everything. Uh, Big Brother Biz, everything. Um, MB Media and Design, everything. That's it, just everywhere. And no matter what, an email, mm -hmm. MB Media and Design, mm -hmm. uh, uh, IG, uh, 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 Whatever. Yeah. Just Google it. Anything. Yo, man, this was a pleasure, man. Just sitting here with you, man. We got to do this again. I'm here. Like I said, every time we I'm talk here. on the phone, I love it. At least for your one year anniversary, you know, for that, for that right there. That's a there, fact. Yeah. It's like my one year anniversary. I'll definitely contribute. Let's I'll do that. Show up. I'm with that, man. Make sure I bring some champagne, too. Yo. <laughs> All Yo, that. shout out to Sice, too. Let me All say that. this before we go. I want to shout out to Sice <laughs> on the fact that he's investing in good equipment he's investing in good spaces to film out of and and even investing in cash app and me back my price that i got to pay to park my car and a lot type you of shit take so care of your guests man the, i want to salute for the world for the edit i don't want it to just be of course i'm gonna take it to ig and do that again for my own viewership and right. y'all make sure y'all get in touch with our violence and politics yeah, i'm definitely man. still going through all the drops necessary Facts, yo. Yo, yo, my bro. Tribe, man. Tribe. We here, B. You know what I mean? Yo, Tribe. You said it. Check them out, man. Make sure you follow all the social media links. This Big brother Biz, man. This ain't going to be the last normal. time you see him, man. This ain't going to be the last time you're going to be back on here again, man. Yo, you know. I appreciate you, bro, man. And see we out of here, man. Rhymes in politics. Stay tuned.